if you could go back five years, what advice would you give yourself? Work harder. No, no. Um, <laughs> be less late. Uh, my advice would be, um, I, I feel it would be just trust yourself. Um, all I feel like I've, well, the main thing I've gained with any age that I have acquired is um, just surety of myself. Uh, being able to look back on my decisions and go, oh yeah, why did I even doubt making that decision or, or, or believing what I believed in or second guessing myself? Um, why did I allow other people's transient thoughts of me or, uh, or, or you know, to, to influence my decisions or to influence how I felt about myself or, or my own life? Um, so just trust yourself more. But go back in time, I'd say, just do what you feel you want to do and take advice from people who you know have your best interests at heart. Otherwise, fuck them. Yeah, mate, that's a a really a really good point. It, it's um, I found myself susceptible to that uh, early on as well, but just kind of being very susceptible to people giving me bad advice. Mm. And people who probably, you know, like you, you you spend hours working on something, days, weeks, and then you put it out there into the world, uh, whatever you do, and then someone will pick it up, have a look at it for a second, turn on the TV, look at it for a bit, and just give you their opinion. Um, and they've thought about it for 15 seconds and then they've moved on to the rest of their life. But that 15 second thought sticks with you and is in your head, influences future work that you do and interactions that you have. But they've moved way beyond that. Um, mm. But And you're the one that's thought about it way more than everybody else. So why do we, um, it's just such a, a, a weird, uh, you know, like we apportion so much care to, to to things and people that really mathematically don't count. Well, how, how did you build up the strength to go, okay, from now on, I'm, I'm ignoring those people. Oh, it's just kind of like, just knowing that like, oh, well doing the thing that someone said um, doesn't really work, but also you see them not taking their own advice or it, it just doesn't gel with what you do or you, 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 you go down a path that's not you or it's, you know, it's good to it's good to consider and to think and to reflect because if you're not listening to other people, well, then you know, well, as comedians and as artists, your mm. work doesn't connect. But I think you've got to trust yourself first and foremost, um, and um, yeah, just just kind of be conscious of the how other people's advice hits you and mm. how affected you are by it. I think because it's so easy to be like incredibly affected by other people's words, especially if you respect them. Um, part of being an entertainer or comedian or writer or artist is that we are sort of necessarily people pleasers. So anyone that gives us some feedback that isn't completely complimentary, we don't really know how to take that in the way that probably everybody else does, which is just no. like with a grain of salt. We're like, oh, I don't want to disappoint. Oh, but yeah. they uh, oh, you know, we're so sensitive. Yeah. Um, which yeah. is what, you know, makes the work good, but it's also like, it's not helpful when you're trying to make the work. Yeah. Well, as Brando says, if you're in a room full of people who loved your performance, you'll always go to the one person who didn't, you know, it's, <laughs> yeah. it, it, there's something about us. Like you go, why, why didn't you like it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> how, can no, make, oh God. how can I make that better in future? <laughs> exactly. It's always like people might with stand up anyway, you know, people might say all these nice things under after you've done a gig, whether it's an online clip or something, and then someone will say something mean and you're like, <laughs> And that's the person you'll reply to, or you know, yeah. you'll spend your time trolling back. Or, and what about everybody else? They're the ones that are supporting you. Yeah, yeah, mate. I fuck. I've got to. I've got to show you something. That there's this thing that, like, I get a lot of good feedback on this podcast, right? And then there was this one guy who's written this thing, and the problem is, it's written really well. <laughs> um, I realize that these are not interviews or conversations, just a series of tie questions asked over and over again. Cute at first, but wearing thin. <laughs> <laughs> what a piece of shit. <laughs> now, did I go around for the next two days just hating myself? And wondering yes. What the, yeah. <laughs> I bet you did. Uh, but that is like, uh, and I hate it when they're written well as well. Yeah. <laughs> Like, give us a spelling mistake or something. That's right. If you've, if you've got a there, there, or there big stuff, I would have gone, exactly. oh, well, don't worry about you. Yeah, no, exactly. it was perfectly punctuated. It was grammatically correct. Uh, nice sentence structure. 
<laughs> it's me. Did you write, was this your subconscious writing this? <laughs> that's, yeah, that's right. What uh, a nice song. Um, yeah, but, you know, yeah. they're, just, they're, just, they're just jealous of the simplicity of something you've created and they can't come up with one themselves. Yeah, that's right. No, but you, that's, thank you, mate. Thank you. Wow. Um, I should delete that um, review, should I? <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were a good writer. <laughs>